welcome to chapter 3, where we're going to get our hands on Spring MVC for the first time. The first job is to configure the central hub of Spring MVC. It's called the Dispatcher Servlet, and there's a bit of tedious work to get it working. But once that's done, we'll be able to forget about it. And then, the very exciting task of writing our first controller. We're going to aim for a simple, clean class with a very straightforward structure. The controller is going to have to call a service, or the model in MVC. Now this is Spring's strength. We're able to inject the service as a dependency to the controller really easily. So let's get started. It's time to see how Spring MVC works. Recall that the purpose of Spring MVC is to hide away a lot of the tedious, repetitive work that you would need to do if you were writing servlets by hand. For example, with Spring MVC, it is not necessary to write a single servlet. Spring has already provided a pre-written servlet for us, and this one single servlet can be used across our entire application. Now, this servlet has rather a pompous name. It's called the Dispatcher Servlet, and it's so called because its job is to handle all incoming requests and then to divert them, or dispatch them, I suppose, to a class that can handle the request. And that class is going to be one of our controllers. And it's almost as if we're taking our controllers and plugging them into the dispatcher. So we still need to write controllers, but typically these are a lot smaller, lighter, simpler, and more flexible than servlets ever were. For instance, we can group multiple use cases together and handle them all through the same servlet class. Let's have a look at an animation showing how the dispatcher servlet works. So here's our user's browser, and imagine that the user has typed in a URL ending with allbooks.do. And this is going to be the web page that displays all of the books held by this particular bookstore. Now, that request will be sent across to a server. Now, up until now, we would have mapped that URL pattern to a particular servlet. But with Spring, we're going to make sure that all the incoming URLs are handled by the Spring Dispatcher servlet. I'll show you how to do that in a few moments. Now, what the Spring Dispatcher servlet will do is it will use some logic to decide which controller it should run. Now, one of the very flexible things about Spring is this logic can be anything you like. It's completely configurable. But the built-in default logic is really simple. All we do is tell Spring a list of URL patterns together with the corresponding controller that we want to run. So if we have, say, three controllers, one controller called Display All Books, one called Find Book by Author, one called Add New Book, we'll be able to tell Spring that the allbooks.do URL maps to the Display All Books controller. So that's the first part of the dispatcher servlet's job in life. It uses logic to decide which of our controllers it should run. Now, what does a controller do? Imagine we've written our display all books controller. Really, the process is usually quite simple. The display all books controller, which will be our Java code, is going to call the model. Now, we're on a spring course here, so we can be specific. And we can say that the model is usually a spring service. And one of the reasons we're using Spring MVC is you're going to see that process is really simple. We don't even have to open an application context. It's all done automatically for us. Once the model has run, and presumably a database call has been made or some very fancy logic has executed, the controller then needs to forward to a JSP page, which is going to display the results. 
Well, another benefit of using Spring MVC is you're going to see that the handover from the controller to the view is really simple to do. And also is configurable as well. Now we're probably going to want to use a JSP page, but if we want to change that for a PDF catalog, say in the future, you're going to see that's quite easy to do. Well, I hope you're okay with the theory. I think it's time we started to implement this for real. The first job is to configure the dispatcher servlet. Now remember that this is a pre-written servlet. It's already supplied by Spring. We will never have to see that servlet. We certainly don't want to see the code inside the servlet, but we do have to declare it. Now I'm assuming you're very familiar with our old friend, the web.xml file from standard Java web development. And that's what we're looking at here. In an application without Spring MVC, we'd need a really big web.xml file with a long list of servlets. Well, this, barring a few extra fancy features that we might add, is the complete web.xml file. The first block is declaring the servlet. The servlet name can be anything you like. I've gone for dispatcher, you could call it Spring MVC, or whatever. The servlet class comes from the Spring Framework, and the class is org Spring Framework Web Servlet Dispatcher Servlet. That will always be the same. You never need to change that. The load on startup is a directive to Tomcat to load the class as soon as we deploy the application rather than waiting until we run a use case. Now, the second block is by far the most important. What I'm saying in the servlet mapping block is that all URL patterns ending in the extension dot do will be handled by this dispatcher servlet. And that's how we can make the Spring MVC servlet handle the whole of the dynamic part of our application. I think at last it's time to go into Eclipse and to get this configured. Well, if you're using the workspace that I've supplied for you as part of this course in the practicals and code folder, you'll in fact find that I've cheated. I've already given you the web.xml file because it's so boring to write. I've literally copied and pasted this from the Spring Reference Manual. Do have a good look at that file, study it, make sure you understand it fully. We will be changing this URL pattern later in the course, but for now, it's a fully working web.xml file. OK, so that's the tedious stuff out of the way. Now, for the reason that you're on this course, this is how to write a Spring controller. Now, this is the complete controller for displaying all of the books in our catalogue. I'll mention now that what we're looking at here is a modern Spring controller. These have only been possible since Spring 2.5. In earlier versions of Spring, you had to do a lot more work, such as extending Spring classes. Thankfully, the old way of doing things is now deprecated, so we won't need to worry too much about that in the future. However, in a later chapter, I will give you a quick overview of the old fashioned way of writing Spring controllers, just in case you ever have to work on a project that is still on an old version of Spring. Now, the main focus of interest here is the view all books method. Note that you can call this method absolutely anything you want, no restrictions, just give it a nice name that reflects its purpose. So what does the view all books method do? Well, first of all, the return type is a spring class called model and view. This is a wrapper object that spring uses to hold two separate things. First of all, the results of the use case. Now, most use cases will result in some kind of data being gathered together. And for us, this is going to be a collection holding all of the books in our system. The second thing this wraps is a reference to the view that we want Spring to use. 
for now, we'll improve this later, but for now, this is just going to be a file name pointing to the correct JSP page. Inside the method, we're just going to invoke our business logic. Any good controller will usually be lightweight and simple because the actual grunt work will be done inside a Spring service. On the web tier, we don't want to worry about how the work gets done, we just want to invoke it. Now the service that we're calling is our bug service that you've seen before, and I've obtained the bug service using standard Spring dependency injection. So you're well used to this now. We have the book service as an attribute and we have a set method so that Spring can inject an instance of the book service at runtime. So here we're just calling the get entire catalog method and we're holding the result in a variable called all books. And now for the return. As I said, we return an instance of model and view. There are three parameters into the constructor of this class. The first parameter is the name of the view that we want the dispatcher servlet to forward to once the controller has finished. For now, this is just going to be the name of a JSP page. We still need to write that JSP page. I'll show you that in a moment. The next two parameters are the results of the use case. Remember that the list of books is held in a collection called all books and I need to pass this collection to the dispatcher servlet and I'm doing that here. We need to give the results a friendly name. This is the label that we're going to use inside the JSP page. Now I can't really think of a better name than using all books again. You're going to see that pattern used quite often where the parameter name matches the variable name, but really it's just a label. You could call that anything you like. One final thing to note, there is an annotation on the view all books method. This is the request mapping annotation and it tells Spring that this is a method that we want to connect to a URL on the browser. So in our case, when the user types view all books dot do, this is the method that we want Spring to run. Now that annotation is going to become really important when we have more than one use case inside a single controller. For now, we just need the annotation there. So I think I've spoken enough now. Let's get into Eclipse and write our first controller. So we're back in Eclipse and I hope you're going to be following along with me because it's really important to make sure that you get all of the moving parts working in Spring MVC. And in order to create our controller, it's just a regular Java class. So file new class and the first decision to make is what package should we place the controller in? Well, at the moment, if I click on the browse button, we have a package for the client tier, a package for data, a package for domain, and a package for services. Really, we want a new package just to hold the controllers. Now, I usually call that package control. In Spring MVC, you can call your controller anything you like. I think we went for view all books controller. At the risk of boring you, I'm going to type all of this out longhand just to make sure that I didn't miss anything when I went through the previous slide and also to make sure that you followed everything that I've described. And the first thing is we need an instance of the book service inside this controller.